Okay, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm going to let you guys jump in really quick so we can get it started. I just made a video about this, but again, it's too long to just do a video. So I want to make sure I give you guys this before I head out the door. And um, I got a hot 10 minutes, so I'm going to try to make this a jam-packed 10 minutes. So you guys join in. Join in, join in, join in. And something funky is going on with my TikTok. So you guys just sit back and just wait. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm just going to read a little bit to you guys in a second. Let more people get in here for you guys to all get it. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to be in a different book. I don't have my Bible with me. I'm going to be in a different one. Um, good morning from South Africa. Good morning. Um, yeah, I'm going to take this one and put this one up. Hold on put you right there and then put this right here how is everybody doing this morning good morning good morning good morning okay 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 so if you haven't heard of this book this is a really good book about david and it's only about David. And it's very good. Good morning from UK. Good morning. Um, it's very good. And it's very detailed and in-depth about um, David and his victories and just about his life. Um, but last night, I was just doing notes for a sermon I'm going to do. And I switched from what I was doing to this because um, God said there are giants that are about to be slayed. And if I was going to title the last weeks of October, it would be Giant Slayer. Good morning from Australia. And God is saying, there are some giants that are about to fall down. I don't know what you've been going through. I don't know what you've been facing. But some major giants in your life is literally about to fall down. I just kept hearing when I woke up this morning, and they all fall down. And they all fall down. And no one can tell you what your giant is. You know what your giant is. You know what you've battled. I don't care if it's not being a teenage mom. I don't care if it's being a father to your father because your dad left you or having a two-parent household and you're fighting to make that work. I don't care if it's stop smoking cigarettes. I don't care if it's to stop drinking or just to con keep a consistent job or to keep a consistent relationship. Whatever giant has been looming over you, God is saying that you are the giant's slayer and it is your portion this season to slay those giants so many no's have been your portion but god says the season of no's is over it is over you my darling are a giant slayer um so i want to come right here and just talk about david for a minute so it says this it says um there are four significant battles between david and goliath and in those battles, it's four points of them. And I'm just going to read a couple of them to you. And then I'm going to go make it make sense for you. So if you're just joining again, I'm going to talk about David for a second and just slaying giants. So facing giants is an intimidating experience. We can look back at David's bravery and victory with the perfect hindsight at the safe distance from 2,000 years ago. But humanly speaking, imagine what it must have felt like to face an intimidating presence of a giant, even with the eyes of faith. Yet David said, my God is greater. So, yes, if you're just starting, this is the book and it can be found at any bookstores. It's written by Charles Swindle. So it's just saying that God is greater than any giant that you face, no matter how big or small the giant is. Trust me, we all have big ones and we have small ones that think they're big. So 
doing um doing battle is a lonely experience if you've been in isolation period right now if everyone's been leaving you or you've been cutting everybody off and everyone's like well why you stop talking to me it's because you're going into a battle you're going into war and you're seeing who's your helpers and who's your bringer like the people that bring you down and you see that they add no value to this battle so you're eliminating people yourselves if you've been blocking people if you haven't been tolerating people and you just like you know what my mental health at all costs you are literally about to enter into a major battle you're cutting people off because you're getting ready to say you know what i gotta go do this myself and can't nobody do this but me and god so here we go um everything is dropping out of my book <sighs> so here we go it says doing the battle is a lonely experience no one else can fight for you your Goliath is your Goliath. Someone else might say, aha, don't worry about that. But you, it's to, but to you, it's a Goliath and no one else can fight the battle for you. Not even a counselor or a pastor or even a parent or friend. It is lonely, but it enables you to grow up. It is lonely on the battlefield, but you must learn to trust God. That's the key to this. You're going to win, but you have to trust God. It is you and God this season. It is you and God on the battlefield. Or let me put it this way, because how I'm saying it is how you're thinking it. It is God and you this season. See how I did that? It is God and you. God is already there. God is already on the battlefield. Now you have to get your butt out there and fight the good fight because no one can slay those giants but you. And most of these giants are going to be secret giants that only God and you know. It is God and you this season. And I used to have this habit of saying, it's just me and God. No, because you don't come before God. Because when you take your butt out there to that battlefield, the devil's going to beat your behind because you went without God. You say you went and then you try to add God in. So no, God and you, God is going before you. He's standing beside you and behind you. He is all around you on that battlefield. And if God is for you, who can be against you? God and you. It is God and you this season. God and you this season. Trusting God is a stabilizing experience. David brought down Goliath with the first stone, with the very first stone. Mind you, David had five smooth stones and a slingshot. He killed Goliath with the very first stone, the very first stone. Um, so David brought down Goliath with the first stone. His aim was true and did not miss the mark. We can't know for sure, but every indication that he didn't have the jitters when he went into the battle. He was stabilized by the God, by his trust in God. You know that feeling, that butterfly feeling when you get ready to do something major or when you get ready to fight or when you get into like this huge battle. David didn't have none of that. He said, in God I live and in God I die. I trust you. If you call me to it, you're going to bring me through it. I ain't got nothing to lose. It's you and me, God. It's you and me, God. David went out there, he looked that giant up and down, and he said, I trust in God. You ain't so big after all. Because the bigger they are, the harder they fall. And I just go back to being a little girl because I was always so little and everybody used to try to jump me. And mom would say, you take the biggest one and you kick them in the knees and you just keep breaking them down. And you break them down and everybody else around is going to be like, oh, I don't want none. Yeah, mom's like, they want some, come get some. You go out there and you might be small in stature. I don't care if you're 4'11". You might be small in stature, but you got the heart of God inside of you. You go out there and you slay that giant. You get back out there and you look that giant in the eye. You look that addiction in the eye. You look that relationship in the eye. You look that job in the eye. And you said, in God I live and in God I die. God, I trust you. You're going to defeat this battle for me. And you take your best shot and you're not going to miss your, you're not going to miss your mark. If you try to tackle the giant with your flesh, you cannot get it done. You'll lose every time. But when you have spent sufficient time on your knees, it is remarkable how stable you can be. When you have been in a partnership with God, if you have been in a relationship with God, you're going to win that battle. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. When you get the courage to go out there and fight that giant, when you get the courage to go out there and break those generational chains, or when you get the courage to go out there and break those curses, when you get the courage to go out there and you say, you're not so big after all, Goliath, 
I might be small in stature, but I got a mighty heart. I got a warrior's heart. I got my father's heart. I look just like my daddy. Because what did Genesis say? We were made in God's image. You look just like your daddy. And God don't miss the mark. God get his justice. God get his vengeance. God does not miss the mark. You better slay whatever giant has been looming in your life. You better get out there in that battlefield and say, come hell or high water, I will defeat you. Whatever it is, you better get out there with that lion's heart and you better roar like the jungle belongs to you because a lion is the king of the jungle. And you better roar and let that giant know this is my territory. You might have ran in my family, but it stops with me. This is my territory. I got this family bl blood in my veins. This is my territory. You might have did something to my grandma, my grandma, and my great grandma, them, my ancestors alone, but this is my territory. And I come to reclaim what is mine, what is rightfully mine. You will not roam in my life anymore. Oh, no, devil. Oh, no. I don't know what's inti what is your intimidating giant today. It, um, matter of fact, winning, winning victories is a memorable experience. We're to remember the victories of our past. We are to pass on the lion and the bear stories, our own Goliath stories. See, the devil wants you to be quiet about your victories. The devil don't want you to testify about you winning these battles, about you coming from poverty, about you surviving domestic violence, about you surviving rape, or whatever it is that you survive. The devil wants you to be quiet. He wants you to close your mouth. Because when you open your mouth, you free people. When you tell your story, you free people. So the devil makes you camera shy. Oh, I don't know. I don't really like the camera like that. It's your own phone. You talking to yourself. Stop thinking about you talking to a multitude of people. You're talking to yourself. And because you're talking to yourself, you feel comfortable and you release that video and you're going to free a nation. Because no one knows how to survive that battle. You might be surviving something that no one else knows how to. So you saying something are going to set the captives free. What are you sleeping on that you think is so insignificant that no one else needs it and you're not releasing it? You're sitting on a pot of gold. Your testimony is a pot of gold and you're holding it in because you're letting the devil have your tongue saying that you're not good enough or you're camera shy or you don't really talk like that. Open your mouth, child of God, so you'll be able to set the captives free. Your testimony can save a nation. Something that you survive can help other people. You're not the only one battling it. Trust me. You're not the only one that's been raped or molested or been beaten down, been hungry, been left dead, left for dead, been shot and robbed. You're not the only one. But the way you came out of it is different. And the way you came out of it can save somebody. It can save somebody. You have no idea what you're going through and how it can save somebody. You can save someone's life with just you speaking out of what you've been through. See, the world is full of false prophets. But then when you have evidence, let's say October 16th, what we just did. And I just said last year, God told me I had a testimony, da, 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 and it all came true this October 16th. Do you know how many devils said, oh, you got the date right? No, I prophesied what God told me and it came into fruition because you will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. And I bear good fruit. And I'm going to tell the world about the good fruit because you're so busy trying to put false prophet on something. When a real prophet shows evidence of what they are, you want to shut them up. No, devil. I will sing about the goodness of God and what he has done. He has done great things. He is doing great things. He will continue to be great. We serve the great I am. And I am that I am is sending you to this battle. Understand this. I don't know what intimidating giant that you're facing today. It may relate to your job, a roommate, a school. It may be even a person, a lawsuit, unemployment, disaster, maybe even your own partner in life. Perhaps it's fear that is lurking around the corner, sucking your energy and draining your faith. God is saying to you right now, all I ask of you is to have five smooth stones and a slingshot of faith. Five smooth stones and a slingshot of faith. That is all God is asking you for. And he says, I'll take it from here. He needs your action. He needs your action. God is asking for your faith. He says, all I'm asking for is five smooth stones and a slingshot of faith. And I'll take it from here. I'm dropping the mic on that. I am dropping the mic on that. God is saying, all I require for this battlefield is faith. That is it. And I need your obedience to walk out here.
and do what I tell you to do. I need you to walk out here knowing that I am with you. I need you to walk out here knowing that I went before you. I stood beside you and I am right behind you. I have my angels out here on the battlefield with their bow and arrows and they're ready to go. They got their swords, they got their shields and they're ready to go. Whatever battle that you're getting ready to fight, just know that God is there. He's saying all I need you to do is have five smooth stones and a slingshot of faith. Five smooth stones and a slingshot of faith. Let me get some stones out for y'all because y'all sleeping. God is saying, y'all ain't woke up this morning. God is saying, five smooth stones and a slingshot of faith. And we're about to go slay some Goliaths. And we're about to go slay some Goliaths. That's what's about to happen. You know what your Goliath is. You know what your Goliath is. Get out there on that battlefield. Pump your chest up and say, in God I live and in God I die. Giant, you ain't got nothing on me. Hell, you ain't got nothing on me. Addiction, you ain't got nothing on me. Abuse, you ain't got nothing on me. Poverty, you ain't got nothing on me. Lack, you ain't got nothing on me. I'm kicking the door in and I'm coming in. It's me and my God and them. It's God and me. And we're coming out here fighting. We're coming out here fighting. We're coming out here fighting. Wake up today knowing that you are a warrior and God is waiting on you on that battlefield. God went before you. He's standing all around you and behind you he got his angels on the outside waiting on you they're out there saying we ready we ready and they hyping you up go out there and be that generational curse breaker go out there and be that chain breaker go out there and be a giant slayer go out there and be david facing goliath and look that giant up and down and say i know how big you are but i know how big my god is and i got my five smooth and five smooth stones and i got my slingshot of faith and all i need is you to god come through god do what you do because the same god that delivered me before is going to be right here the same god that made a way out of no way is right here the same God that was right there with me on Suicide Alley is right here with me now. The same God that was then is here now. God is. That is who he is. He is. You are serving the great I am. And he said, get your butt out here on this battlefield. It is a giant, giant out here. And he is waiting on you. And he's out here calling you by your first, middle, and last name. And he's saying, you scared? And you come out there saying, I ain't never scared. I wasn't scared then, and I ain't scared now isolation is getting ready to set you up for the greatest battle and you're about to be victorious because you got your slingshot of faith on you and god says i'll take it from here just come out here on the battlefield and i'll take it from here walk around today knowing that you are that giant slayer walk around knowing that god called you for such a time as this and you are about to knock a giant out the park look that giant up and down today and you say, come hell or high water, I will defeat you. I'm not scared. I ain't shaking. I got a good smooth hand and I got a right hook to knock you right up out of here, devil. You've been looming too long. You've been huffing and puffing for too long. But just like the big bad wolf, he huffed and puffed and he couldn't blow that brick house down because it was rooted on foundation. The devil wants to knock your house down. And yeah, when you first started out, your house wasn't really built. It was like some little sticks and the devil would come through and he would huff and puff and he would blow that house down. And then you built it on something else and he would huff and puff and he would blow that down. But now that you know who your God is, you are rooted. You have a brick house now. You are rooted in God and the devil's coming and he's blowing and he's blowing and he's wondering why the winds are changed and he's trying to blow in your life ain't blowing your house down. And you in the house like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, devil, you ain't know. I got my firm foundation now. Blow now, blow now, do it now. The devil can't touch you, baby. This is your winning season. I close on this. God is saying, we are going to battle. You will surely overtake it. I just need you to have your slingshot of faith. I need you to have your slingshot of faith. If this message was a blessing, my link is in the bio. Father God, I ask that you equip all of your children with the five smooth stones and help them have that slingshot faith. Because we know that you're going to take it from there. I don't know what they're battling with. We all have our own giants to slay. And it doesn't matter how big or small the giants is, they're still monumentous in our eyes. And we need you to help, Father God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Go before us in these battles. Step beside us and behind us. Send your angels around us. Encampus us, Father God, with your glory. You get the honor. You get the praise. 
you are already winning this battle for us. When we get out there, we're thinking we're walking into a battle, but it's already won. We will be able to pick up the spoils of the victory. We will walk onto the battlefield thinking that we were about to fight this battle. And you say, no, look on the ground, pick up your royalties, pick up your crowns, pick up your jewels, pick up your finances, pick up your homes and whatever it is. We're going to have the spoils of war that we didn't even fight. Because we had the nerve to walk out there with our slingshot of faith and our God on our back. And we said, Father God, we know that you won this battle. And it is in your mighty name that I pray. Amen and amen and amen, Jesus Christ. Win these battles. Win these battles. It is already won. Go get your spoils. Go get your royalties. Go get it. God has already won it for you. I love you guys. I have to head out to work and have a blessed day. God is for you so no one can be against you. <laughs>